This is Twit. So I'm going to compare a lot of of things to Rust because honestly, um, my experience with Rust is very limited, and that's part of the the issue that I have. So totally, Rust is. First of all, I have to say Rust is awesome, right? I mean, it's it's performant. It it makes you write good code because it won't compile if you do something dumb. I, I think that's that's probably not in the documentation, but it seems like a, a fair thing to say. It is a uh, feeling that people have. Even if I wouldn't say that's a guarantee, that's definitely like an opinion and a sentiment that many people share about it for sure. Like you're not totally out of bounds to say that, even though anyone can argue about anything, right? Um, sure, <laughs> that's fair. Um, I think that when, when so when I think about Rust in some of the few projects I'm involved in, like Filecoin is something I, my day job is to manage Filecoin cli- or miners. The main l- mining software is written in Go, but the very uh, fine-tuned performant part is written in Rust for obvious reasons, right? Uh, so I, I just I think it's a it's a powerful language, but I'm gonna pick at you just to kind of get your response to if people ask me about it, what can I what can I I say to them and things like when I think of Rust, I compare it to C++ most in my head, right? I, I think of, you know, if we could reinvent C++ back however many years ago and say, instead of learning this thing called C++, let's learn Rust. I think that there would be far better uh, programs out there in the world, far better applications written. But I worry that Rust isn't better enough or doesn't offer enough to like rewrite code uh, you know, sure. sure, you could rewrite your C++ code and in Rust and it would be better, but I'm not sure if it would be better enough to go through that. So uh, where do you see the niche right now for Rust in that kind of an environment? I think that most people like think about programming languages like sports teams. And so they sort of assume like, you know, there is a winner and a loser and the loser goes away and the winner gets all the spoils. And that's how like software evolution works. But I don't think that's actually like accurate, really. I think that there like over time, more things get written and the, the pie grows for everyone. Uh, and so that's like a more productive way to think about language adoption. So, for example, it can be true uh, at the same time, for example, like if you looked uh, 15 years ago before Rust existed, um, 100% of the software maybe, let's just say for the sake of argument, is written in C++ because, uh, you know, Rust didn't exist. Now, maybe let's say 10%, be extremely generous to myself, 10% of software is written in Rust and 90% is written in C++. That means that in some sense, Rust has grown and C++ has lost, but at the same time, like there are so many more programmers that exist in the world that C++ can have grown like because there's more software that exists, right? So I think that more, you won't necessarily see as many people like throwing away existing code bases and rebuilding them in Rust. But I do think that you'll see people increasingly faced with the choice of what do I use for my next project? And they will decide to choose Rust instead of C++ or whatever other thing they would have chosen. And that over time, those things will grow in importance. And so Rust's importance will also grow. There are some examples of things being rewritten, but I don't think that's like actually the majority or the way that like programming languages get famous, right? Like when Ruby on Rails became incredibly popular, uh, it wasn't because people threw out their Perl code and rewrote stuff in Ruby, right? It was a new generation of startups that decided to choose Ruby to do that. Um, and I think that's kind of how programming language evolution tends to work on a macro scale. <laughs> 